Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's definitely yours truly, Mr. Damon I mean Meadows. I'm live. I know I haven't been live in a minute, but I've been working. I'm talking about right now, I'm literally probably off of two and a half hours sleep within the last 48 to 72 hours. What's up, James? How you doing, bro? But uh, if you look at the heading of my live, the live is called Progress Over Pride. What's up, Ange? How you doing? I want to just really just talk to my family right now and uh, really go into a deep discussion. I, and I want some interaction right now because I want if I'm tripping, I need uh, I need y'all to let me know I'm tripping. But uh, I picked this subject, progress over pride, for a reason. Because, hey, Ange, how you feel? I picked progress over pride because I've been noticing, you know, in my family and in my friends, that pride stops a lot of people from progressing. And... I'm talking about from immediate family to strangers. Let me break it down what I mean. Okay. Let's take a realistic situation. If I got the understanding or the blueprint to make a way for our family to progress, right? I got the blueprint, me, Damon I mean Meadows. I got the blueprint for our family to progress. And I'm saying, I know who that's on. Who is it? We didn't, you want to be together? Nah, they came earlier. Our wrong door. <laughs> yeah, we ain't playing no games at all. Pizza man stuff. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Look, then back to what's going on. We are born that game. But anyway. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Listen, Ms. Giss, you need to get with me ASAP. Seriously. All right, back to the subject in hand, ladies and gentlemen. We talking about tonight a serious situation. We talking about progress over pride. And I was giving you a... a a situation where I got to understand it for my my family. Let's say, you know, my family, I'm just to keep it real with y'all. You know, one thing about me, Damon, I mean, Meadows, I'm going to keep it 1,000 with y'all. Most of my family are living check to check, right? So, me, I've never had a job, never had a nine to five, never punched nobody clock. That's just my life. I'm not, you know, I am proud of it. I'm not going to say I'm not proud of it. I am proud of it. That's right. I never had to work for nobody. I work for myself. Whether it was illegal or legal, I work for myself. Anyway, but uh, Mr. Harold Sykes, congratulations and thank you, man. Thank you, Mr. Harold Sykes. Seriously, for everything you're doing for everybody in Carabars, literally. I'm talking about, matter of fact, everybody in the world because you're really changing people's lives. And to have you literally on my Facebook Live right now and for me to be talking about progress over pride right now, it's just a salute to you. And it's not a game. I remember me and you was in Vegas, Mr. Harold Zeiss, and we were saying it's not a game. That's right. Because know why? What you just did right now, Mr. Harold Zeiss, you changing people's lives around the world literally forever. So I'm sorry, y'all. When I when it, when it, when it, listen when a multi-millionaire come on your Facebook live, you gotta acknowledge him. I'm sorry, y'all. So I had to acknowledge Mr. Harold Sykes, the CEO of Carrot Bars International and the uh, the CEO of the the new cryptocurrency that's literally going to be backed by gold. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. So hats off to Mr. Harold Sykes. All right, I'm back, y'all. I'm back. I just had, I was excited. Mr. Harold Sykes got on my Facebook Live. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I was talking about progress over pride. And it's funny because 
Mr. Harold Sykes can attest to this as well. But back to what I was saying about the real live situation within myself. Uh, most of my family are living check to check. And the reality is, is I'm showing them a way where they can reach financial freedom. And I'm talking about financial freedom to the point where you don't have to work for anybody. You don't have to punch nobody's clock. You can learn about the financial system. You understand? And I'm talking about, it was amazing to me because I got a little cold, so, so work with me, y'all. It was amazing to me that out of pure deep pride, some of my family members wouldn't even take the nuggets and the jewels that I was giving them. Out of pure deep pride. I'm talking about, and it's sad because most people miss an opportunity out of pride. Because you may not know a person. You may not like a person. You may not be the same religion of a person. You may not be the same color of a person. You may not speak the same language of a person. But does that literally initiate or give you reason to deny the blessings that the creator put in your hands? No, not at all. So I'm going to give you an a, a, a example. And I was talking to one of my mentors, Mr. Demond Crump. Mr. Demond Crump is another CEO of another multi-million dollar uh, uh, company called Inspire Network. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to sound, you got to surround yourself with millionaires. This is what Damon I mean Meadows do. I literally surround myself with millionaires because when you are around millionaires, if you're gonna you're gonna become a millionaire, or you're gonna know the road to become a millionaire. So with that being said, me and Mr. Crump was talking, and Mr. Crump told me he said uh, he was giving me a story about LeBron James. Check this out, Miss Miss uh, Guess. He was talking about LeBron James. He said people were mad at LeBron James when he left Cleveland. So they didn't see his vision. So then when he went and got a championship, and then Le Miss LeBron James came back to Cleveland to play for them. But guess what? His wife didn't want him to come back. His friends, immediate friends, didn't want him to come back because the owner of the, of the Cleveland basketball team was talking bad. They dog LeBron. I'm talking about when LeBron James left Cleveland, they, they dog LeBron. They did not know his vision. Listen, his own mentor. One thing about I love about King James, uh, LeBron James, he, one thing about it, he takes care of his, his team. He takes care of his team to the point where his team, the ones that didn't make it to the NBA, he put them in position where they would never work a day in their life. He made them become lawyers. He made them become accountants. He made them become business owners. It all in his empire. So this man got a vision. His inner circle, James, is so tight. He said, man, look, basketball is just one thing that we do. But back to what he was talking about when he was going back to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm talking about his wife did not want him to go back. His, his, his immediate circle did not want him to go back. You know what LeBron James said? He said, progress over pride. He know the owner talk bad about him. He know he was taking a pay cut. He know all that. He knew that before he signed the contract to go back to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But know what, know what this man's vision was? I'm going to bring a championship back to my city 
and be in the history books forever. Do you understand? Y'all ain't just hear what I just said. This man's vision was so profound and so enormous that he knew the average person didn't understand where he was going at. You understand? They didn't understand. They didn't see his vision. They like, why are you going to go back to Cleveland? And they dogged you out. They talking about you, you, you did them wrong. You left them for dead. All this type of stuff. LeBron James said, progress over pride. You understand? He knew his vision. So he put his pride to the side. Yeah, they talked about me. They talked about me. I get it. But I see my vision. I see my end game. You understand? I tell people that like my brothers and sisters in Inspire Network. Guess what? They talk about Damon I mean Meadows selling pads. Look, I mean, oh man, you 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 a soldier. You you did life without the, you did life, man. You, you had a life sentence. You was the man in the street. Everybody know you forget money, all this old other stuff. You going to sell pads? Come on, man. You pushing pads? You don't see my vision. You understand? They don't see the vision. Let me tell you something. As a man that has two daughters, a mother, my sister, my nieces, who are like my daughters, who all the family, my aunts, my cousins, I got family members, female family members that I love and I protect. So as a man who understands what it means to be a true protector, how can I not protect my family from something that I know that they absolutely positively need every single couple days? Every single few days, for week, few weeks. Every couple weeks, they need it. Not want it, need it. Hey, Sherry Brown. We talking about progress over pride. That's one scenario. And I tell people, I said, wherever I talk to people about different opportunities or different circumstances, sometimes people let their pride stop them from progress. And this is what this live feed is about. And I want to get some feedback from my people. Angie said, I'm Angie from the block, but I got knowledge. Knowledge is power. I know better and I do better. My millionaire friends ain't hanging out. They're hanging out now. <laughs> they're, handing, they're handing out knowledge. That's right. That's what we do, Angie. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the reality of preparing my family for generational wealth, Nick. That's what we doing. Because I'm not ashamed to say that. And I'm, I'm actually proud to say that the things that I'm, I'm implementing in my family, I'm the first one. Damon I mean Meadows is the first one that's implementing entrepreneurship in my family. Damon I mean Meadows is the first one that's implementing gold in my family. Damon I mean Meadows is the first one that's implementing cryptocurrency in my family. Damon I mean Meadows is the first person that's implementing a published author in my family. Damon I mean Meadows is the first person that's implementing so many things that I'm doing, writing screenplays, being a public speaker, going to different organizations, churches, mass jids, uh, in front of the Congress, in City Hall, in Philadelphia. I'm the first in my family to implement these things, and I'm proud about it. Now, people in your inner circle are not even going to understand you sometimes. And you have to understand this. That's a good thing. Because if you want to be average, do what the average people are doing. What is the average person doing? Working 40 hours a week for 40 years, if they can keep a job that long, and retire for 40% of their paycheck. 
that's not going to happen to Damon Amin Meadows. I'm just, you know, putting it all the way out there. I'm just being blatantly honest. That's not going to happen to me. I don't, I don't want a job. I don't feel like working for nobody. That's me. I'm not against a job. I'm just telling you what Damon Amin Meadows feel. Because I'm not going to let my pride stop me from progressing. Meaning, I'm, what do you mean by that? I'm not going to sit here and say, I see these brothers in Inspire Network have a product that's mandatory for every woman who has a cycle. They need this product. I see the facts that states and shows that the harmful chemicals in these store-bought brands is harming our women. This is a fact. So therefore, I'm going to sit back and just ignore this information and not act on it because of pride, because I'm a man, I'm a heterosexual man, and I don't want to involve myself in sanitary napkins. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. My friend Rose just came on my live just now. Rose is a woman who literally helped her husband be a cancer survivor because she understands the getting a, a toxic out her body. This is Rose right on my phone. I'm right on my live feed right now. So it's only right for a woman like Rose to embrace the Now We Know campaign because she know the dangers of the sanitary napkins and tampons that's on a storeboard shelf. See, when you understand a movement so strong, and so powerful, you put your pride to the side. You understand? So, I tell people, don't be like the average person. Just like Rose just said on my Facebook live, she said, she said I do. And, I, and salute to you, Rose. Like, I, I talk about you all the time about how you put your pride to the side, even, and, and I don't mean to put your business out there, but, you know, me and you talk. Even when Rose's husband left her. Rose, when, when he said he got cancer, Rose was so strong. She put her pride to the side, went back to help this man who left her because he had cancer. And she cured this man of cancer. Rose, am I lying? She on my Facebook Live right now. Listen, when I read her story, she was in a magazine telling her story. It was phenomenal. I was like, so I said, man, I got, this woman is phenomenal. She put her, let me tell you when a woman is scorned. When this woman, this man left her for nothing, like literally took everything, Rose, I'm sorry. You, you, listen, Rose, your story is so phenomenal. And it's good that you're saying truthful in this live, but I just got to share it. Because Rose is so, she's so much of a good black woman, a strong sister, the reality is, this man from Philadelphia left her, left, took a property, everything. And then when he called out to her and said he got cancer, this woman stopped what she was doing, went back to him, nurtured him, fixed his house, his water, everything. I'm talking about everything that his new utensils, everything he was using that was toxic to his body. She got rid of it and gave his house a full makeover. And she literally, this man doesn't even have cancer. No more. They can't have, they don't find no traces of it. Because she put her pride to the side for progress. How many of us would have did that? I don't know too many women that would have did that. And that's just one story. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand progress before pride. She thought about her kids, because guess what? That's the father of her children. You see what I'm saying? Look, then he kicked, look, look, she just put it on my Facebook Live. Then after, listen, y'all, Nikki, this, this is, listen, she's on my live right now. Then after she, I forgot that part, Rose, after she cured this man of cancer, he kicked her out the house. See, this ain't no Tyler Perry movie. This is real. This is my friend right there on my Facebook Live right now. Rose. Yes. 
after she cured this man of cancer, he then kicked her out the house again. Are you serious right now? But let's, guess what? She did it because she loved the creator. She did it because she think about her children. She did it because she thought about the love of a person that she once made a vow to. That's the type of woman this girl is. You understand? She said progress before pride. She said, he said, thank you for everything. If I owe you any money, let me know. Wow. That's what he told Rose after he got cured for cancer. I did it for the masses. See, look, look at Rose. Look what she put on my Facebook Live, y'all. You understand? And listen, I, I just felt like talking tonight. And look at that. Look how the creator revealed the, the very story that I'm talking about. Progress, ladies and gentlemen. You understand? So when you, when you think about, when, see, I tell people, always do things for the creator and you ain't got to worry about man. You see what I'm saying? You do it for the creator. You don't got to worry about man's blessings because the blessings don't come from man. The blessings come from the creator. See, once you understand that, hey, my heart is fine. Listen, I had a trial. I had a test for that. Because the guys that told on me when I was selling drugs and all that type of stuff, I used to have a hard heart. Before, I was like, I'm going to get them jokers. I'm going to do this to them. I'm going to do that to them. I'm gonna... I was hard-hearted because I'm like, I got a life sentence without the possibility of parole. I'm mad. But guess what? Until I forgave them and let that foolishness go, I was free after that. I ain't have a worry in my... Listen, I'm talking about it was so much of a pressure off of me. I was like, man, it's a blessing. I'm love. I just, I just let it go. Because I realized we united upon a sin. So how can I hold them accountable? We was united upon a sin. Selling drugs is a sin. We know this. It's clear. So how can I hold them accountable for what they did? Our, our, our bond was based on a lie, a fate, a sin. So when I realized that, I had to let it go. And it was the best thing I ever did in my life. So now, that Rose, that's right, Rose says she, paid, she, she wrote a book about her story, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I had to progress and put my pride to the side. Let me tell you what a lot of dudes come home and from jail to do. They hold on to their pride. I was the man. Zach, we talking about pr uh, uh, progress over pride. That's right. And like, like Rose just said, forgiveness. Because if we don't choose progress over pride, we'll always be in the back. And I was giving certain examples about my friend uh, Rose right there, how she was a soldier for her husband. This man, she was the real. Uh, that movie Tyler Perry wrote, no, nah, Rose is the real deal. Rose is the real deal. Y'all seen that Tyler Perry movie where the, the guy was a big time lawyer and then he got paralyzed and he went, he left his wife for the white girl, but then his wife had to come back to take care of him. No, Rose on my Facebook live right now, that's the real person right there. Forget a movie. Forget a movie. We talk about real life people. You understand? Damon I mean Meadows, a real life person, had to put his pride to the side. And choose progress over my pride. You understand? And I, I tell my sisters and brothers who come home from prison, put your pride to the side. You ain't that man no, man no more. You ain't that girl no more. See, that's what a lot of times uh, uh, ex-offenders, ex ex a.k.a. returning citizens, hold on to what I used to be. Or what people look at me to be. Until you relieve, you relieve yourself of that, until you realize you got to progress. You ain't that person no more. You ain't doing those things no more. Guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, you got to progress. You have to realize I ain't that person no more. See, when you progress, you know what I, you know, you know what one of my best things I used to live off, y'all? And I still do. I'm not going to lie. The best revenge you can do is success. You understand me? The best revenge for those jokers that's told on me, that snitched on me, that betrayed me, betrayed my brotherhood, that took my kindness for the weakness, that went against me. Listen, 
the best revenge is success. You know what, what, what Rose's husband is going to regret? And he's regretting right now? That Rose got a, she got a published book. This woman is a, is a, 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 a successful, uh, uh, what you call that? Uh, I forgot. Man, what you do, uh, Rose? Put it on there. She, she, she take care of people and get the natural, uh, uh, herbs and all that type of stuff. I forgot the name you told me, Rose. I'm sorry. She take care of people, uh, with natural cures and stuff like that. She believe in all... What is it? A wellness coach. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. Rose been in all types of magazines. This woman travels and speaks at all types of uh, events. You know what that does to the people who know? She's a uh, holistic healer. There you go. I knew it was something, Rose. She's a holistic healer. She literally get paid to go in people's homes and take care of people. She prepare their meals. She do all that. She a holistic healer. Guess what? They sick about that. Gee, we got to talk about this, big homie. Progress over pride. This is what we talking about. Look at Gary McCall. That's my brother. This is, we talking about when, when good people get together with good vibes, we understand what's going on. So we got to unite upon progress. You understand? And put the pride to the side that I don't know you. I didn't grow up with you. Uh, you ain't from my city. You ain't from my country. Uh, I don't, we don't speak the same language. Let me tell you something. And I learned this by being in prison. Some of the best people I met and still got, re I'm talking about excellent relationships right now. Is the brother, yes, I'm in, I'm in Atlanta right now, uh, Rose. Some of the best people I ever met was people I was in prison with. Let me tell y'all something. We shared Roman numeral soups. We shared soap. We shared, I'm talking about, he had a bar, I need a bar, he give me a bar. I ain't talking about share the same soap, so let's get that clear. <laughs> but listen, y'all, we literally created a bond because, oh, we got to get together tomorrow then, Rose. Let's, let's make it happen. Yeah, I want to see you. Let's, let's make sure we get together tomorrow, Rose. But we literally shared, if I got a Roman numeral soup, you need a Roman numeral soup. I got a bar of soap, you need a bar of soap. I got a deodorant, you got a deodorant. Guess what that means? We put that pride to the side. Because now I'm in a jail. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in society right now. Guess what? I walk by my brother right now today, and I don't even know if he got soap to wash his body with. Because we're dealing with everyday life. You understand? Look, <laughs> look, you told me you still owe me a soup. You silly. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, and, and this is what I mean by you have the bonds that's real. See, when I came home, you know what one of my friends told me? And this is so sad. This is real talk. He said, I mean, stop worrying about everybody else and focus on yourself. I'm like, what? It blew my, this is one of my, this is one of my close companions. I'm sitting there like, are you serious right now? But you know what he said? He said, times have changed. I said, no, nah, brother. I said, let me tell you something. I said, times change, but that don't mean we got to change. Because when I came home from prison, I realized, guess what? People start being on I time. My time. Me time. I come from the us era. I come from the we era. I come from the family era. I don't know nothing about I, me, myself. I, I don't remember that. I don't know that. So I don't let the times dictate my morals and principle. I just don't. I argue with my wife about that. I argue with my daughters about my daughters about that. I argue with my mom about that because they like dad. Like, I'm your daughter. But I don't look at my nieces no less than my daughters. And I know they not my blood. They not, I mean they're not my daughters, but I look at them like my daughters. I don't play the that she my niece and this my daughter. I don't play that. We're family. That's how I rock. Family is family. That's how we rock. But I realize a lot of people don't understand that bond because they put in their pride first. You understand? 
to the point where you can't tell certain people's kids what's wrong. They get mad at you when you check their kid, knowing that their kid is wrong. No, y'all. That's not how we was raised up. Because first of all, when you know a person got love for you, that means I got love for your children. That's the era I come up under. I'm not going to change that from nobody, even in network marketing right now. This is one of the most deceitful, the most fakest industries I've ever seen in my life. It's just fake. Network marketing is fake. The people only love you when you're making them money. 98% of them. 98% of your team, your, your, the, the, the leaders, the, the CEOs, all that only love you when you're making them money and when you're doing things right by them. That's fake to me. I don't rock like that. This is why the champ is always going to be an outsider in network marketing because I don't, I'm not a network marketer. I'm a businessman. I'm a hustler. You understand? Real talk. I don't know no other way. So if I can help your family, I'm going to tell you. If I'm doing something else, I'm going to tell you, listen, get your money. Let's do this because I understand family. I understand structure. I don't know no other way. I don't. You understand? So I have to be authentic with my people. Like that's all I know how to be. Randy Love. What's going on, Randy Love? Look, Randy Love. Did me and this man, I, listen, before I even met Randy Love, we had a bond unbelievable. I never even met him before. Me and him had a bond like this, and I never met him face to face. Never met Randy Love face to face before we had a bond. Like, we, was, we was already bonded like this because we, we seen the authenticity. We heard the authenticity on the phone. We talking. We going through different situations together. And I'm like, man, I, this dude, he always on point. He like, man, he carry, hey, how you doing? I mean, you all right? How your family? And like, you know what I mean? I'm talking about highs and lows. I ain't just talking about, about business. I'm talking about highs and lows, period. How your dog doing, your mother doing. Oh, so it was a relationship outside of business. See, a lot of times people don't understand that. You understand? Damon, I mean, metals, I only know how to be one way. This is why I always put my pride to the side and I choose progress. I always do that. <laughs> that's right, Randy Love. And that, that's real. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell people, put your pride to the side and choose progress. Because in life, if you don't have the way to opportunity, if you don't have a way to success, if you don't have a way to get out of debt, if you don't have a way to get away from your job, if you don't have a way to spend more time with your family, if you don't have a way to spend more time with your wife, if you don't have a way to spend more time with your husband, if you don't have a way to spend more time with your children, and somebody is offering you a, a real opportunity, and they're showing you, take the opportunity. Put your pride to the side and choose progress. You understand? You have to understand how serious I... Look, life is this short. I know I'm handsome. I know I look good. I know I look like I'm like 19 years old. But I'm in my 40s. <laughs> y'all know I got handsome fun, y'all. But I don't remember 40 years. See, I don't remember 40-something 40, 40 years. And I'm thinking like, man, I'm in my 40s. Like, that's crazy. I was just 19. So I'm trying to get y'all to understand. <laughs> He's talking about, come on, play it. Randy Love, you silly. But I'm just saying, no. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Rose just said it. Poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. So my thing is, life is this short, y'all. We, it, listen, it's too short to be stressed. Life is too short to be stressed out. So we have to understand. Look at, hey, all right, Aki. You told us I'm 40, Aki. <laughs> Listen, 
Life is too short to literally be stressed out. So we have to take advantage every single day because the creator might literally call us back tomorrow. Just like Ange said, Ange put job mean just over broke. Like I said, I'm not again. I'm not against jobs. I'm ser I seriously am not. For Damon, I mean metals. I just don't see it. I'm going to write some books. I'm going to write some screenplays. I'm going to do public speaking. I'm going to get into network marketing. I'm going to save me some gold. I'm going to do. I'm going to sell some T-shirts. I'm going to sell some CDs. That's what I choose to do. That's what I choose to do because I believe in entrepreneurship to the core of my bone. I would rather hustle every day of my life and doing what I want to do than to punch somebody clock and be miserable every single day. I see people in my family, in my immediate circle, every day they miserable. They get up a crack of the morning, miserable. They complaining getting up. They complaining going to work. They complaining when they get to work. They complaining at work at, at lunchtime. They complaining when they get off work. They complaining driving home in the traffic. They complaining when they get in the house. They complaining once they, oh my God, like, are you serious? I ain't got no time for that. Life too short. Life is too short, y'all. Like for real, life too short. And the things we complain about don't mean nothing when the reality come down to life and death. You mad because a man cut you off driving down the highway. You got road rage. Like seriously, like these things are so minute when it comes to life and death. And me Seeing people die, like and when I was in prison, excuse me, y'all. Me seeing life and death every day, it it brings me back to reality and knowing that this stuff is this small, this small, like it ain't worth it. You know, me and Randy Love was talking about our mothers the other day. Randy Love praying for his mother, so like. When you come to realistic things, like real deal issues, real family members, real issues, that's what we talking about. Not no bull crap about a bill. You got a, a light bill, phone bill. Bills are not going nowhere. Get that out your head. This is why we grind. This is why we hustle. You know why? We hustle so we don't got to worry about bills. Like I tell people, you know what the definition of insanity is? The definition, legal definition of insanity is repeating a thing, thinking that you're going to get different results. That's the definition of insanity. Repeating an act or a thing, thinking that you're going to get re different results. Look it up yourself in Webster. So if you think you're going to work your job and you're going to meet, you're going to reach financial freedom, working your job and nothing else, you crazy. You, you insane. It's not going to happen. So this is why Damon I mean Metals is telling you, you have to get you a home-based business. Yes. You have to get a home-based business. Put your pride to the side. See, people, what I love about network marketing is it gives you financial freedom. See, people put a bad bone on network marketing. But let me tell you how long net, network marketing, this is facts, I'm great. You can Google this or whatever you do and do your research. It made more millionaires than any other industry. Network marketing made more millionaires than hip hop, made more uh, millionaires than NFL, NBA, uh, soccer, uh, you name it, all industries, boxing, uh, you name it. It made more millionaires than any of those. Network marketing. See, this is one of the best kept secrets that people don't. Not only do network marketers have some of the best products in the world, the best product in the world, 
Best product. You talking about from coffee to tea to tampons. I mean, to uh, not tampons, to pads, to uh, Max Life pro uh, prostate products. We got stem cell product, all that type of stuff. The best products in the world is, is in uh, network marketing companies. So not only do we have some of the best products, but you get paid for them? Selling something that people need anyway? And you can sell it on your own time when you want to, to whomever you want to. Come on, y'all. The sad part is people put a bad bone on it and people don't become successful because they don't learn their business and then they put a bad bone about network marketing. You can't do that. Just what Andy said, estimated to make a trillion dollars by 2022. See, this is facts, ladies and gentlemen. You understand? I put facts together. One thing, I don't run off emotions. I don't run off everybody, you know, put the music on. Dun, 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 dun. I don't go off of that hype stuff. Let me do the numbers. Let me know about the... It says, I'm at the bus station with my sister and still. <laughs> Randy Love. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not playing no games. We have to understand. Look at that. Mr. Randy Love at the bus station with his sister and he's still on a Facebook Live. You know what I mean? So you understand how dedicated... That's my friend right there. Literally. You understand? So we... So I'm telling you, when people understand progress, when you want to get ahead in life, you put that pride to the side. Why? You know what I tell people? You know, I tell people, you know, I, I, I was talking to one of my, my childhood friends the other day. He's like, man, you in a 24 pack club, man. Give me a couple of dollars. First of all, I'm like, this joker looking at me to know about, he said 24 pack club. So for him to know what the 24 pack club is, he looking at my Facebook live. But then he know I'm getting money when inspired. So he knew that the 24 pack club, plat pack club is coming from selling the sanitary napkins. But guess what? He has not called me not once. And he got a daughter that works that uh, is a cheerleader right here in the, uh, for the, uh, for the Atlanta Hawks. She's a cheerleader. But guess what? I'm, I'm thinking like, you, you watch me enough on Facebook Live to know about the 24 pack club, but you ain't call me to get in. Pride. You understand? Pride. Cause this my, listen, me and my man grew up in North Carolina. When we, every, every time in North Carolina, my mom used to send me down to North Carolina every year. Every summer, Oh, you're going down to North Carolina. Because Philly was so bad. Every time I get out of school, she sent me straight down North Carolina. But I say that to say, this man know me, know my family. We know each other's family. We, we didn't did everything together. But yet, you see the success I'm having. You see the lives and testimonies of so many women that I'm changing. You know why people call me the champ. You see my viral video went over my viral video went over 75 million views. You seen this. You but yet you won't say, hey, I mean, champ. Let me let me get let me be a part of that 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 uh 24 pack club. Huh? Your pride. But you'll go punch a clack clock for somebody that you don't even know. You understand? You will go punch the clock and work hard and be a good worker for somebody you don't even know. But yet, your man, your friend, you one person you call your brother, you break bread. We don't share intimate secrets with each other. We done been through family members dying and all that. But you won't get in where you fit in. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's pride. You know what some people have an audacity to, sell, to ask me? What you getting out of it? What? First of all, Reverend, I'm telling you about gold. 
Wherever I'm telling you about helping your daughters out or your wife out with sanitary napkins, wherever I'm telling you to read one of my books about HIV, or I'm telling you to read one of my books about uh, uh, bipolar disorder, what are you worried about what I'm getting out of it? Why is that even a conversation? Because guess what? I'm going to break it all the way down to you. Do you worry about what Nike is getting when you buy them sneakers? Do you worry about what Warren Buffett is getting when you buy the many products that this man own or the man who own Walmart? Do you go in Walmart and say, well, how much is this guy that is getting from his family that own Walmart? Do you ask that question? Do you ask that? Do you ask who, when I bought this Movado watch, did I say uh, how much Movado is making off this watch? Or this iPhone, how much Steve Jobs is, is, is making off this iPhone I just bought? But yet, a person you say you love, a person you say you, you would die for, you would kill somebody for, you don't want nothing to happen to them. This is your man, this is your girl, this is your wife, this is your friend, this is your co-worker, this is somebody that you know, intimacy. But then you're going to say, what's in it for you? Are you serious, man? So, you got to understand, do you really love me? Do you really want for the best for me? Because you know what? Back in the day, let me give you, the, let me give, and you're right about that, Rose, about mindset. You know what segregation was? I'm going to take y'all back now. We great go deep, y'all. See, people think segregation was good. I don't. I really don't. Let me tell you why I say that. Because when we were segregated, we was like this. Let me tell y'all why. Black people spent with black people. Black people party with black people. Black people, you going to a black doctor, you going to a black a nurse, you go into a black shoemaker, you go into a black tailor, you go into a black cleaners, you go into a black barber, you go into a black hairstylist, you, we was like this. You party, you went to a black juke joint, you went to a black speakeasy, you went to all, everything was in United. Everything was like this. See, most of us don't understand that. So now when they when they stop segregation, oh, I can go spend with them. I can be like them. I can dress like they dress and be where they at and do what they doing and all this. They tricked us. Believe me, they listen, y'all. This thing is so deep. That's why they say. Black people spend the most money in the world. We the biggest consumers in the world. That's why, guess what? In our, in, just look in our communities. Asians, Dominicans, Jamaicans. Everybody's in our hood getting money off of us but us. That's just real. Everybody is in our neighborhoods Getting money off of us, but us. And the sad part is, that's my lover, ma'am, Ontario Small. I'm going to get to you in a minute, Ontario Small. Thanks for joining. But back to what I was at, Miss Driver, I'm mad at you, but I still love you that you've been on my uh, live. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody comes to our community to benefit financially. So look at the mindset. When JoJo opens... A mom and pop store that got the same products as Lee Wong and them down the street. Just because JoJo got five or ten cent or fifty cent uh, higher prices because he can't afford the bulk rate that Lee Lee Wong and his whole crew is buying in bulk together. You gonna go with Lee Wong and them? You're going to go with Lee Wong and them because Lee Wong and them is saying, hey, how you doing? I I like your hair today. I, you, friend, let me tell you something. That's all marketing. 
It's, see, people go to places they feel comfortable with. So when JoJo and them, you know them all their life, and they're going to say, hey, Damon, how you doing, man? How you feel, man? They, okay, what you want? You know me. But I'm giving you the same products. But you want to go to Lee Wong and them. But name, I, I want I'm, this is the question right here. How many Chinese people you know came to something you own? How many Chinese people bought a product from you? Answer that. How many Chinese people you seen going to a soul food restaurant? Please answer this question. How many Chinese people, Dominican people, um, white people going to the, uh, 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 the soul food restaurants that you know that's owned by black people? I'm not prejudiced. I'm just stating the facts. What Rose say? Rose said, Jews buy from Jews. They won't even put their own brakes on because it takes money out of their friends, the mechanic product. That's right. Let me see. We don't understand that. And it's sad. We don't understand that. It's really sad. Because they will go out their way. I'm going to tell you what happened in Atlanta, Georgia. See, most people don't know this. See, I do. I do my... I, I love history. One time uh, uh, on Buf Buford Highway. Those of y'all in Atlanta, y'all know Buford Highway. The, uh, the mail, the, the people that, that deliver the mail. Uh, I forgot what it was. Oh, they wanted... Uh, the mail, they were saying that they wanted their mail. What the was it? I'm just make sure. Man, I forgot. Because I don't want to lie. I don't want nobody to, to say, damn it, I mean, Meadows lied. Uh, it was about the mail. Oh, man, I forgot. But they all band together and they wouldn't buy from nobody but themselves. Like, I'm talking about they band together to the point where it was it was like a boycott. So people should understand you gotta and it ain't it ain't being racist. I love like I'm a Muslim. I got white brothers, Chinese brothers, Chinese sisters, African brothers, all types of races. But I'm African American. I love what the creator created me. I love my people. It's nothing wrong with that. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said he's an Arab. He loved when Allah created him. He's an Arab. His people was the Arabs. Ain't nothing wrong with loving your people. So don't let nobody think loving your people is wrong. There's nothing wrong with loving your people. So understand what I'm saying. We have to educate our people. You understand? You got to educate your people. People don't understand the reality of, like, just, they, they did a number on us. People, if you, if you don't read that, that book, the Willie Lynch, the Willie Lynch book, whew, how they used to do the slaves, how they used to break the slaves in front of the mother who had little children. So a mother love, and I tell people this all the time. Because us, we can't see, like, man, if I was asleep, I'd be going hard. Nobody going to tell me nothing. Me and Mr. Crump had this conversation in the car. Man, nobody going to tell me nothing. I ain't, I ain't kissing no master nothing. I ain't doing nothing. Master would have had to whoop me. Let me tell y'all, that's a false concept. Because if your mother, when you was a child, if your mother seen her husband Brutally killed. I'm talking about sometimes they 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 took a string and and stretched our arms out of socket and and ripped our heads off. Literally, they hung us. They whooped us till we died. All types of stuff in history when the slavery happened. Guess what? When a when a woman seen that, her her son, her father, her husband brutally killed like that. When she raising her kids. You know what that mother, out of love, I need y'all to get this, out of love, you know what that mother going to say? Whatever master say, we got to obey master. When master's sick, we got to take care of master. No, when Ma master say we got to come and warm his bed, little baby girl, you got to come warm master's bed. 
Do she really want her little girl to go warm master bed? No, she don't want that. But guess what she don't want even greater than that? She don't want master to kill her little daughter. She don't want master to kill her son. She don't want master to do all these things. So guess what? She going to take the lesser of the two evils. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. A mother's love, she's going to always choose the lesser of the two evils. So she can say, no, you ain't going to handle sex with my little girl. That's my daughter. But guess what? Not only will they kill her, but they going to rape and still kill her daughter. They've been doing that for centuries. So a mother out of love. See, that's why I said a mother's love. Sometimes, some, we, as a father, sometimes we can't even understand how deep a mother's love is. Like, a, listen, let me tell you, a mother's love, if unless you're a mother, you will never understand it. So she going to raise her son not to be a punk. Ooh, to be a... You see what Rose just said? To be a survivor. Rose, that was deep, Rose. She going... And I, that's the perfect word. She going to raise her son because she done seen her father get killed, her husband get killed, her older uh, uh, brothers and every. She done seen them get brutally murdered. So she going to raise her youngins her kids to survive. To survive. See, if you look at Roots, you think Chicken George was a coward. Chicken George wasn't a coward. His mother, Kizzy, raised him. She knew that Master was up his father, but she never told him. And she raised him to the point where Chicken George was the best cockfighter for Master. Not knowing it's my father. But guess what? He loved Chicken George. And guess what? He knew Chicken George was his son. You understand? That's a mother's love. But when a mother seen him getting too attached to Chick to the master, she had to tell him, don't you go against master with me. He raped me. Y'all ain't understand. Y'all ain't see Roots. I love that movie. You understand? So she chose progress over pride. You, Kizzy got raped by the master and had Chicken George, but she knew the progress. She sacrificed the progress. Are you serious right now? She sacrificed her being raped. She's going to swallow that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to speak it. I'm going to raise my son. He ain't going to know nothing about none of this. I'm going to raise him so he can he can love Master. Because you got to remember, Kizzy's seen her father. All of, everybody kiss, killed. She got separated from her mother. All that. Y'all got to go back to roots. Guess what? She chose progress. You understand? I'm going to go back to Kunta Kente. Y'all, see, listen, I go deep on y'all. I'm telling y'all. Remember Kunta Kente was, kept running, got his foot chopped off? Huh? Remember that? And then he was getting ready to run again. But then, what was her name? Rose? Oh, I mean, it might have been Rose. I think it was Rose. The one that, that uh, he fell in love with, he married her, and then she got pregnant. She said, I'm pregnant. He said, you going to leave me? You going to leave me? Chicken George hold the, he heard the, the, uh, the bangles, the, the, the hitting of the drums. That was the sign to run. That was the sign to run. And he said, when you hear the, when you hear the drums, we escaping. Kunta Kinte was like, I'm out, all right. When I hear the drums, I'm coming. Because he, you know what Kunta Kinte said? Kunta Kinte said, chains ain't for nigga, fiddler. He said, chains ain't for nigga, fiddler. fiddler. He said, man, I ain't chain staying here. This ain't, I got to go. But let me tell you what he did. When Rose told him she was pregnant, the lady that took care of him when he got his foot chopped off, 
And she wouldn't feed him and say, you got to come get this food. Get up out that bed. She loved that man. She said, get up out that bed. You want this food? Come get it. She made him feel manly again because he was broke. He was, his spirit was broke. He ain't want to get out the bed. He, he, he ain't want to get out the bed. He was like, he chopped my foot off. What am I doing? I'm a half a man. She was like, you ain't no half a man. I see a man in that bed. She said, get up out there and get your food. I ain't giving it to you no more. He was like, oh yeah. And he got up. He fell. He got up again until he got his food. Then he started walking. Then he started doing things that he could do again. He started, but he was planning his escape the whole time because Kuta Kente was a soldier. But guess what happened? When that time he had to escape, when he met that brother, he said, we escape. When we hear the drums, come running because we get ready to escape. But you know what Rose said? I'm pregnant. I lost my children. She was a soldier. She moved with wisdom. That's what my man Keys just said. Rose said, I got, I got a child coming in. I lost my family. I can't do it again. They took my child from me. She said, you going to leave me? That's what she told Kunda Kente. You know what he did? He sat back. He heard the drums. He like this. He mad because he know he know he, he ain't freedom. He, that's all he know. He know freedom. That's all he know. He said, until I get freedom, I ain't going to rest. But know what? He chose progress over pride. Let me tell you why. Because he stayed there. He said, I ain't going to leave you, Rose. We're going to raise our child together. He put his pride to the side. Y'all ain't understand about this progress. See, he is bigger than him. He got a family now. He embraced his family. He said, you know what, Rose? We're going to raise our child together. I ain't going nowhere. Progress over pride. So they had Kizzy. But check this out, Greg. Go up, Greg. Go deep on y'all. He had Kizzy. And then, guess what? Progress. Because now, guess what? They took Kizzy anyway. He begged, after Kunta Kinte begged Master not to take Kizzy. Because guess what? Kizzy started reading from the white little slave, I mean, so the white little girl. They, rode, they grew up together. Master's child grew up with Kizzy. So Master's child, she taught Kizzy how to read. But then when her father found out that she taught Kizzy how to read, she was going, it was going to beat her. She was like, no. I didn't teach her how to read. So they took Kizzy away because they didn't want blacks to progress. Y'all ain't hearing me. But guess what? Kizzy was separated from my family. Guess what? Then Kizzy got molested by the master and she had Chicken George. But look what Kizzy been through. She got separated from her mother and father. She got molested. Then she had Chicken George. She told me Chicken George, whatever Master say, do it. But then Chicken George, after he found out I'm going to buy my freedom, guess what happened? He thought about progress. He wanted to kill Master. You see when he had the, the, uh, the, the uh, I think it was a, a, a knife in his hand or one of them things you car carve things with. When his mother told him that Master raped me, he was going to kill Master. He like this. Chicken George, the one that was a coward. But guess what? He like, he raped my mom. He thinking about all the stuff that I love, master. And all the time, this joke of my father, he was mad. But guess what Chicken George chose? He chose progress over pride. Know why? He put his pride to the side. He said, I'm going to buy my freedom. Know what Chicken George did? He said, I'm going to be the best cock fighter that master ever had. I'm going to buy my freedom and come back and get my family. He put his pride. Yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if I can swallow that. I know the man raped my father. I'm mean, raped my mother. And he my father. I, I don't know if I can do that. I Chicken George was a better man than me. Cause that's for a man, especially this, that's a heavy burden to have on you, brother. So this man chose to put his pride to the side and chose progress. He went out. 
and fought those cocks and fought those cocks and fought those cocks and paid for his freedom. Then he came back and paid for his family freedom. Y'all ain't understanding me, man. That's vision. That's putting your pride to the side and choosing progress. Do y'all understand that? He, he, chose, he came back and bought his family. And you know what his wife said? Let me tell you something. You know what Chicken George's wife said? That's what she said. When, I'm talking about he left her for years. Not no days, not no months, years. You know what Chicken George's wife said when she said, when she seen him on that horse? She said, my man is home. Are you kidding me right now? 2018? You can't leave a girl for two days. She, oh, I'm divorcing you. It's over with. We divorced. You leave a woman for two days, it's over with. <laughs> Listen, she, this man told his wife, I'm going to fight these cocks. I'm going to come back for y'all. That's what she said. That's what he told his wife and kids. He came back, he had grandchildren. When, that ain't funny, Khadija, that's real talk. When he came back, he had grandchildren. When he rode up on that white horse, and they said, boy, who are you? He said, I'm Chicken George. He said, my granddaddy? Because guess what? They all talked about him. Chicken George, the great cockfighter. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all got to understand how serious this is. That man left his family for progress. For progress. He left his family for years, but he stayed on his mission. He said, I'm going to buy my freedom, and I'm going to come back and buy my family freedom. And that's what he did. He chose progress over pride. I know I wasn't a little deep tonight. I'm sorry, y'all. But listen, it's so real, y'all, because honestly, yeah, yeah, that's right. Honestly, these you leave, I'm, that's the truth. Y'all want a divorce after two days. I we listen. I'll be back. He's like you be my one divorce cooler. Like that's it. Like, two days y'all want divorce, <laughs> but that's sad. But I'm just saying. But anyway, but we have our morals together. Our morals was tighter back in the day. It was you know what I mean. You believed in your family structure. You understood your word is everything, and you know morals and principles. We just don't have that. When I when I came home, I was like, this is sad. Like this is really sad. You know what I'm saying? That's right, because these are vision, vision for freedom. So now, I'm we free. We ain't slavery is over, but guess what? We on financial freedom now, y'all. Because guess what? Just like Kunta Kente said, chains ain't for nigga fiddler. Because he came from Africa where it was free and everything was open. And he ain't never come from saying somebody massa this and massa that. And yes, massa. Uh, uh, we sick, massa. Yes, sir, massa. He ain't come from that. So he's everything in his mind is to get back to freedom. Everything in his mind, he cannot relate to nothing but freedom. That's how I am with money. I can't relate to nobody job. I can't relate to nobody telling me what to do. I Listen. I'm doing what I got to do right now for financial freedom. That's it. Broke ain't for nigga, fiddler. That's where I met with it. <laughs> Bro broke ain't, chains is broke to me. That's chains, having chains financially chained ain't for, ain't for, I mean, straight up. Broke ain't for, I mean, that's how it is. That's the same thing Kuta Kente said. Chains ain't for nigga, Fiddler. I'm telling Fiddler, the world, chains ain't for I mean. Financial freedom is the only thing I can possibly know. You understand? I'm going to do everything I got to do to get it. Straight up. I don't know nothing else. I'm going to be giving out samples every day. I'm going to talk to people about the Now We Know campaign. I'm going to talk to people about this. I'm going to do, I'm going to sell my, I'm, listen, that's what we do when you want freedom. Because know why? Once you taste freedom, you don't want nothing else. 
ain't nothing else going to taste good. I'm telling y'all, when I was in that drug game, I'm talking about I did what I want. I balled out any car I wanted. We did it all. Guess what? I taste freedom. And I'm telling you right now, ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it. I never punched a clock in my life. That's just Damon I mean metal story. I didn't say it was right. I'm just telling you my, my reality. It's the truth. But guess what? I've tasted freedom. I never had a job and I'm chasing freedom legally now. I don't know nothing else. So the same attitude I had in that foolishness in the street, I'm putting the same effort right now into corporate America, into network marketing, into gold, into pads, into books, into DVDs, into movies, whatever. Listen, this is what I do because I only know one thing. I got to be financially free. That's it. You understand? I don't know nothing else. Because guess what? Financial change ain't for our mean fiddler. That's it. You understand, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know nothing else. I got to be financially free. I eat, sleep, and you know what? Financial freedom. You understand? That's it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my mindset. I don't know what your mindset is. I can only, you know, this is just what I'm saying. This is what I wanted to share with my family tonight. You know what I mean? That's it. Progress over pride. Put your pride to the side. Get in where you fit in. Nobody said it's going to be easy. Nobody. Nobody said it's going to be easy, y'all. Nobody. If it was easy, everybody would be financially free. Everybody live in a multi-million dollar mansion. Everybody would. It's not free. But I'm telling you, it's so sweet getting to it. I'm telling you, because when you, when you taste that freedom, ain't nothing like it. I'm telling you. And when you be on you something that you accomplish and you not, you know, put, I'm not, listen, like I said, do your job. But after you get off your work, Work for yourself. That's all I'm saying. After you get off your job, I don't care if it's 5 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever. Whenever you punch out, clock out, punch out, whatever y'all do. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Work, put some hours in for, for you and your family. Don't do those 8 hours and 12 hours and then come home and you don't put no work in for you and yours. Don't do that. That's going to be the biggest dishonor that you did to your family. That's real talk. Don't do your family a dishonor. You understand? Don't do your family a dishonor like that. Get in where you fit in and let's take these financial chains off. We choosing progress over pride, y'all. You know what I mean? Progress over pie, over pride. You know what I mean? I got real deep with y'all some roots thing, didn't I? I ain't mean to. That just came out. <laughs> hey, listen. Oh, listen, but roots one of my best moves. I ain't gonna lie. Listen, but it because I'm looking at it. Because let me tell you, I know, thank y'all. But listen, I looked at it without being mad about the black and white thing. So when you look at it now that we're older, and you be like, yo, this is deep, man. Like, I'm looking at it on an educational tip. Like, what they stole from us and how we were with one, with one another. It's, that's right, A Rose. It's real deep. You see what I'm saying? And I'm sitting like, yo, like, why we don't have that self-love no more? They stripped. They did a number on us, y'all. They did a real number on us. But it's us to get it back. We don't keep crying over spilled milk. We know what it is. We see what it is. Let's get it back. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I done went way past what I was trying to do tonight. <laughs> but, oh, I like that, Khadija. Back to the roots. Ooh, I like, oh, I mean, no bubble be clapping. That's, listen, I like that. That was a good one, Khadija. I'm going to steal that one. Back to the roots. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Damon I mean Meadows. Thank y'all for tuning in. I just had to share some things that was on my heart. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, like I, you know, y'all my family. I only, all I know is to keep it real with y'all, straight up. So uh, I ain't mean to offend nobody, like seriously. Oh, we got Jackie Mams on the phone, the line today. Hey, Jackie Mams, 
listen, I ain't mean to, you know, really offend nobody. If I did, please forgive me. You know, and uh, it just it is what it is, y'all. You know, let's let's just keep it pushing, man, and always choose progress over pride. Good night, Mr. Champ, and I'm out. <laughs>